Hello, in this video I will show you how to install GCC on Windows. GCC or the GNU compiler collection has compilers for C, C++ and a bunch of other languages like Fortran or Objective-C. As an optional step I will also show you how to install a C, C++ IDE. Technically you don't need an IDE to develop in C++. You can use any text editor like Notepad++, Sublime Text and many others. We'll start by downloading CodeBlocks, which is a free and open source C and C++ IDE. Go to the download section, select download the binary release and make sure to choose the first download option, which contains only the IDE. It is important that you download the IDE only installer, because the last three installers, for example, will come with an outdated version of GCC and we don't want to install that. Next step is to download a GCC binary for Windows. While there are many options to choose from, I would recommend the TDM GCC distribution. This will be directly recognized by the IDE and integrates well with Windows. Because I have a 64-bit computer, I will choose the 64-bit version of GCC. If you are not sure what kind of computer you have, go with the 32 bits. This will work just fine on both 32 and 64-bit system. Now that the downloads have finished, we'll start with the GCC installer. The order in which we install the compiler and the IDE is important. Installing GCC first will allow the IDE to immediately recognize that our system has a C++ compiler installed. Otherwise, you will need to set up the compiler location in the IDE manually, which is a rather tedious process. We'll go with the recommended settings and choose install. GCC should be now installed on your computer. A quick optional check is to open a command window and check the GCC version. If GCC was properly installed, you should see the version number, otherwise Windows will tell you that the command is not rec recognized. You can open a command window by pressing the Windows key plus R and writing CMD Enter. Other way to open a command window is to press the Shift key and right click on your desktop and select Open command window here. As you can see, we've just installed GCC 5.1 on our computer. Now we'll install the code blocks ID. Press next and keep the default settings. Once the installer is done, choose yes when asked if you want to run CodeBlocks now. This will ensure that CodeBlocks will correctly detect and pick the GCC we've installed earlier. As you can see, the GNU GCC compiler was correctly detected. Ok, now that everything is in place, let's see how hard or easy it is to use code blocks with C or C++ programming. First, we'll need to create a project. A project is just a way for code blocks to keep things together, like our source files, information about the libraries we need, 
where to save the executables and so on. From our point of view, a project is just a folder on our hard drive. We can create a new project from the file menu or simply by choosing create a new project from the start here page. As you can see, Codeblocks has a lot of predefined project templates. For the purpose of this video, we'll use a console application. Use the drop down menu to select a console application project and select console application again. Here, we can choose between a C or a C++ project. Let's try the default C++ project. We'll need a name for our project. Let's use test. Because it is first time when we've opened Codeblocks, we'll also need to create or select a folder where all our project will be saved from now on. I will choose to create a new folder on my C drive named dev, in which Codeblocks will save all my project. Feel free to use a different name or location if you wish. Next time, when we will start Codeblocks, the folder to create project field will be already completed. Now press finish and Codeblocks will create the project for you. Unfold the sources to see the default C++ source file created by Codeblocks. We can compile and run the code by pressing the build and run green arrow from the menu. Be careful that there are two green arrows in there. The larger one is useful when you want to run an already compiled project. Every time you modify something in the source code, you will need to press build and run. Otherwise, Codeblock will use the previously compiled executable. Now, let's write some dummy code and see if our changes are correctly compiled by Codeblocks. Okay, it works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.